Hey, Dustin here, Smoking Eagles Rod Shop, back with another video for you guys today. It's the one we've all been waiting for. We are going to break the cam in today and fire the engine up for the first time. But, first thing we got to do is put the top of the engine back together because we just got this thing bolted together yesterday. I've got a whole list of stuff to do. That includes this list, but not limited to because I'm sure we're going to have to add, subtract, multiply, a few things on that. But... I got a whole crew here, got my dad, we got Justin, got my buddy Jim. We're all gonna kick in here, high gear, thrash this thing together, and hopefully fire it up before it rains at two o'clock this afternoon. It's like 10 o'clock, so um, yeah. I'm gonna stop yakking, I'll put you guys up on time lapse, and we'll get the bust in this thing together, and I'll meet you back here when it looks, I don't know, a little more like an engine in this area. Alright guys, so it is actually time to fire this thing up and break the cam in. We got everything all bolted together. Checked, double checked, triple checked, checked the oil, checked everything else. I got my vacuum gauge set up over here. I've got our timing light all set up. Now, we're supposed to fire this thing up. We're supposed to set the timing and then crank the idle up to 2000 RPMs for 20 to 30 minutes and they also want you to um, well, different people say different things, but essentially anywhere between 2,000 and 2,500 RPMs, they want it to sit there for about 20 to 30 minutes. So we're going to shoot for 25 to 30 minutes. We're going to keep an eye on our water temp and everything. Probably set it at like 2,100 RPMs and then maybe turn it up a little bit and then maybe turn it back down. Just keep it in between the 2,500 RPM and 2,000 range. The idea behind that is when you um, change your RPMs up and down a little bit, periodically it allows oil to flow across your cam in different spots at different rates so that you make sure you're getting good oil coverage on everything not just you know all the oils directed one spot so anyway we're gonna roll it out and uh see what happens ready crush your fingers Yeah, I need to set the timing and stuff when it's running. Like, but you can...
terrible. No, it's not. So, we can tune it, do all that other stuff. But yeah, dude, I drove it on its own power. I started to pull forward and I pushed on the brake pedal and I was like, oh, the brakes aren't even hooked up. <laughs> so, uh, I better hook up the vacuum line for the brakes. Oh, vacuum line for the breakers. Yeah, so um, to break the motor in, I wanted as few um, potential issues as possible. So I made sure nothing was hooked up, <laughs> essentially. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's probably idling a little funky because we don't have the vacuum advance plugged in either. Yep. I'm supposed to set timing and then plug in the vacuum advance. So um, anyway, guys, here's a little walk around. So issues that we have um, as of right now, we've got a little dribble of antifreeze right there, which is far from a problem. Um, we need to drain the oil, check the oil, refill it with some fresh lube. I'm running old valve cover gaskets. So we need to pull the valve covers off. We're gonna check all the valve train, make sure there aren't any visual issues with anything. No crazy wear or anything nuts after the break in of the cam and then go from there. Then we can start buttoning up things that really matter. Like Jason's messing with the spark plug wires over there. We can zip tie those somewhere where they're gonna be. We can get that fuel gauge off of there because it's worthless. It just bounces around and is waiting to leak. Um, we can start tuning on the carb. It's actually gonna rain, so that's why we brought it back in here. And you can't really run this thing in here for very long at all because you start breathing that. And it's a 455, guys. I mean, it's a lot it, of exhaust. Yeah, it idles for like three minutes and your eyes are watering and you just can't take that much freedom. So, um, yeah. That's where we're at. We're gonna button a few things up. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I am so stoked. I literally had to just walk around for like 20 minutes and just breathe because oh, of like wow. the stress and like anxiousness and everything is just kind of like, whew, I'm mellowing out, man. Um, I'm really excited. I'm super stoked. Um, it's gonna be so bad. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be so badass. Be so I am so, so ready for this. I hope you guys are too. I'm glad I'm bringing you guys with me. And uh, yeah. All right guys, so we just drained the break-in oil out of the Buick. We're gonna make sure there ain't nothing sketchy in it, but it looks really good. I know it might look a little dark to you guys, but it's... The car's old. You gotta see how thin that stuff is, you know. It's, it's not carrying sludge. That's just from running. See, it looks pretty good. See how many black bits we get down in here? There's no metal shavings. Look how, you can see how clear it is coming off my finger. It just looks dark in the pan. It's like there's some stuff in there, but it's like, it's stuff that needed to come out of it anyway. It was probably already in there. Yeah. Nothing scary. See that in the bottom of the pan there, guys? There's a couple little chunks of stuff. I don't know if that's metal or if it's just little chunks of dirt that fell in the bottom. I mean... I've never had the oil pan off of this. So there's 71 years of sludge in the bottom of that pan. Not having any metal or anything coming out of there. Yeah. I'm happy with it. I'm not scared of nothing. I don't see anything in it, do you? I don't see a bright line of anything reflective. I don't see nothing sketchy. Couple chunks of carbon, but yeah, again, like I said. Couple chunks of carbon. 71 years that pan's been on there that I know of. Yeah, a couple or times. since not, not 71 years since 1971 i'm an idiot <laughs> yeah 50 53 years i'm gonna say that's good enough for a break-in i'd say that's clean enough oil yeah if you had any problems it would have been it, it would show up right there it would have been apparent it, it would have showed up right there so we can roll this under we can get our oil filter off of there we'll toss a brand new wix filter on there so if problems do arise it will hide them from everyone yep. and uh yeah we'll move on we'll keep on Keep it on. All right, guys, time for our main point. We'll just see how Carmen does on the mean street. <laughs> fire safety, of course. More yeah. fire safety. If you got it, you won't need it, boys. Yeah. Oh, put your seatbelt on for safety. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait for me, Captain. No, I'm leaving. Oh, shit.
good enough. It's the not the engine making noises. Yeah, the body's got to remember what it's like to get romped on a little bit. Yeah. But it has good pickup. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. When you when you when you flat it, it definitely pulls. I haven't I haven't went past half throttle, dude. Oh. Uh oh, guys. You gotta do a safety burnout. Make sure. We got the everything bolted on the top of the motor. We got the cam broke in. Everything went flawless. It runs really good. I still need to tune the carburetor, do some tweaking here and there to get things really ready for Cletus some cars in a couple days. And but, um, yeah, got our valve covers back on there. We put a couple zip ties here and there. So yeah, I think that about sums this up. I hope you enjoyed the cam swap and break in here and all the other videos, you know, bolting the heads on the car and going to stage one. I'm really stoked to see where we can go with this and how well it actually performs. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. And if you haven't checked those videos out, make sure you go and do that. I don't want you guys missing any of this action. And yeah, go check out some of these videos around my melon here. I'll post them all around there. And till next time, keep on wrenching. Peace. <laughs>